Good morning. Good morning. What a joy to celebrate Christmas Day together here in the Lord's house as we look at John chapter 1 and see that the Word became flesh and has dwelt among us to save us from our sin and to give us the gift of life now and forever. So that will be our, our focus and our joy as we celebrate and worship this morning. And we'll begin with our opening hymn number 373. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful God, you gave your eternal word to become incarnate of the pure virgin. Grant your people grace to put away fleshly lusts, that they may be ready for your visitation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, and many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from, John, from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of flesh, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, 
And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn number 368. We did nothing to bring Christ from heaven. He came without our invitation, without preparation, without our decision, without our welcome. He was sent by the Father, conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. And all this he did without consulting us, without our help. It's entirely God's doing that the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. May God, the Holy Spirit, entirely by his own doing, lead us to worship him as our Savior who dwells among us to save us from sin and death. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, ten little fingers, ten little toes, with love and grace our family grows, or so the saying goes. When a child is born, parents count. And thank God for the wonderful gift of a newborn child. Parents count and and they wonder, what will this child be? What will this child do? I don't know if Mary and Joseph counted or not. I suppose they may have. But they did not have to wonder what this child would do. They knew. The angel told them clearly and precisely, this child is the Son of God in human flesh. For as we heard from God's own word, the word who was in the beginning was with God, 
and was God. He became flesh and dwelt among us. He came to save his people from their sins. What those ten fingers and ten toes would do is fight. Fight to the death. Those ten fingers didn't fight by being clenched into fists, but by being stretched out in mercy. Fighting not against flesh and blood, but for flesh and blood. Fighting not against the men and women of the world, but to fight against the rulers, the, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, as we hear in Ephesians 6, verse 12. And so those ten fingers fought this battle by reaching out and touching lepers, healing the sick, casting out demons, and raising the dead. And those ten toes, too, they didn't fight by running into battle, but by walking with the lonely, walking with the outcasts, with the sinners, walking the countless dusty paths in Judea, Samaria, and Galilee, and stopping to help wherever there was a need. But most of all, those ten fingers and ten toes fought by having the fight taken out of them when they had those large, cold, hard iron spikes driven through them, attaching them to the cross. This was hand-to-hand -hand combat, you could say. Your God, your Savior, fighting for you, fighting to the death and even through it, conquering death, conquering the grave for you and me once and for all. Now, it probably would have been a lot easier if he would have just destroyed the whole world. God could have done that too, just destroy the world and, and dealt with the problem of sin once and for all. Just do away with it, the whole thing and us along with it. But no, that wouldn't do. God wants no one to perish, not a single soul. And so just as God specially created Adam from the dust of the ground, getting his hands dirty, if you will, to rescue Adam, he would do the very same thing for us. He would get his hands dirty, his ten fingers and ten toes, to save us. The eternal word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what we celebrate at Christmas, that God is for us in the flesh. That's the miracle that we rejoice in this day. That the God who created all things and still upholds the universe by his power has come in human flesh and blood to fight for you and for me and for the entire world. You're simply too precious not to. Each and every, per each and every person is worthy of his time, his attention, his blood. No matter who they were or what they had done, Christ is for us. That wasn't just true 2,000 years ago. Christmas isn't just the celebration of an event in history. It's much more than that. It's a celebration that those ten fingers and ten toes are still here for you, are still fighting for you, for your ten rebellious fingers, your ten wandering toes, and all the rest of sinful you. The fingers and toes of that baby in the manger and that man on the cross are here now, just as they were then, reaching out to save, baptizing, absolving, and feeding. God doesn't just mail it in and, and leave us on our own. He comes to us. He comes to homes, to hospitals, to churches, to cities, to countries. He comes to the wealthy, the weak, and the wandering. He comes and he won't stop. And this coming, this dwelling with us, it speaks volumes. The author of the book of Hebrews tells us that long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So the sending of his son shows you how much God loves you and what he's willing to do for you. The appearing of the Son also shows that God doesn't stay far off, delegating, protecting his holiness, his honor and glory. 
but instead he comes among us in the muck of our sin and our world to embrace us, to give you his holiness, to give you his honor, and to give you his glory. Those are his Christmas gifts to you, to restore what you had lost, to raise you from death to life, to bring light into the darkness, into your darkness, and to bring joy into sadness, yes, even your sadness and grief, whatever it is you're going through, Christ comes to you and is for you. And so last night may have been filled with many silent nights, but today Isaiah says the watchmen lift up their voices and sing for joy. And he calls on all the Lord's people to join together in singing and rejoicing. For God has bared his holy arm. He rolled up his holy sleeves and he got to work. No less than God was before, but now also as true man, to save men, to save you. Ten fingers with dirt under their nails, ten toes all dusty with dirt stuck between them, two hands and two feet with holes punched through them, one back with too many lash marks to count, one head with innumerable thorn holes, and one heart pierced for you broken for you, filled to overflowing with love for you. Love that no spear, no death, no devil could ever take away. And with that, with those gifts given to you, God equips us then to share those wonderful gifts with others. That your feet may be the beautiful feet that Isaiah spoke about. Beautiful not because they're clean, but because they're dirty and dusty and grimy because they're serving. They're they're out there serving others, loving, forgiving, being there for others, just like Jesus, proclaiming the good news of great joy that has come to us this day in word and deed, especially because we know that every place we go is wrapped in sin, fear, pain, and struggle, and death, and in need of God's good news. That's John's Christmas story. John doesn't have the the angels, the journey to Bethlehem, the shepherds, no kings or wise men. For John, the Son of God, made the journey down to us. He didn't have to. He didn't have to, but he was compelled by his love for each and every one of us. He is incarnate because he loves you. Yes, sinful you, unlovable you, rebellious you. He is both the shepherd and the lamb. He is the king of kings and the wisdom of God. He came from heaven to earth, not just to live with us as one of us, but to die for us. He takes our human nature not to be an example for us or to show us our potential, but to be our substitute giving his sinless life into death that we who are dead in sin might live. You take everything else about Christmas away and you still have that. Even if all the carols, the lights, the trees, and the gifts would disappear, the word became flesh. God has bared his holy arm and the devil has been put to flight. The light has shined down upon us who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. And we who were hopeless have been given hope. The glory of God lies wrapped in swaddling cloths in a manger. Because today, Christmas Day, the word became flesh. And in him we are forgiven. In him we have peace with God. We have peace with one another. In him we are children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And his name is Jesus, for he has saved his people from their sins. To him be glory, honor, and adoration forever and ever. Merry Christmas. Amen. At this time, please stand for the prayer of the church.
Word made flesh in the joyous celebration of your nativity, we have seen your glory. Your goodness and loving kindness have appeared to us. Grant us comfort and peace in the knowledge of your incarnation and a blessed new year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Word made flesh, by your sacrament of holy baptism, we have seen your glory. Make all the baptized confident in the promise given to them in the waters of baptism. Grant repentance to parents who have withheld the treasures of baptism from their children. Give to all your people hearts welcoming of children. Continue to expand your kingdom through this blessed portal to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Your Word made flesh, in your ongoing provision of daily bread, we have seen your glory. By your spirit, visit those who suffer, the sick, the sorrowing, the hospitalized, the poor, the destitute, the homeless, the unemployed. Remember those who have requested our intercessions, especially Lennis Gabithuller, Joe Graziano, Elizabeth Herring, Chris Thompson, Justin C., Jean Heitman, Debbie Heitman, Eunice Niemeyer, Dale Gable, Colton Doherty, and Norma Rahm, that they might not be given to despair, but entreat their Heavenly Father's protection even in times of great need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Word made flesh, in your crucifixion and resurrection we have seen your glory. Give comfort to those who grieve, especially those who mourn the death of Virginia Alford. Grant to all people a sure and certain hope in the resurrection of the dead and eternal life for all believers in you on the day of your return. Keep us steadfast and faithful until that day. Lord, in your mercy. Word made flesh in your holy supper, we have seen your glory. From your humble entry into our world in the womb of the Blessed Virgin to your first bed in a feed trough, you set aside the honor you rightly deserve to bless us with your presence. As you now come to us humbly under the forms of bread and wine, bless us with a right faith that we might worthily receive your body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Word made flesh, we give you thanks that of your mercy and compassion you became, become incarnate and have redeemed us from sin and everlasting death. Enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may ever be thankful for such grace and comfort ourselves in, by it in all tribulation and temptation, and at last obtain eternal salvation, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one Lord, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory. As seeing you in the person of your son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 388. May the good news that, that God was made flesh and has dwelt among us to save us from our sins give you joy this Christmas season and always. Uh, a couple quick announcements. First of all, on, on tomorrow, Saturday, we do not have our Saturday service, but we'll have our normal Sunday morning service at 10 in the morning. Um, we'll have New Year's Eve worship on New Year's Eve at 6.30 in the evening. Uh, so we look forward to that and ringing in the new year uh, with Christ. Um, and so is there any other announcements today? All right, with that, have a blessed Christmas.